And today we're going to discuss data. We in our last class uh, we discussed the data and how, if you really look at the data in a different fashion, you see the enormous progress that's been made. And the point was made that uh, there are a lot of problems getting at the data, bad passwords, um, uh, people charge for data, but t today I'm going to approach another data problem, and that's the problem of partial truth. The fact that most data is presented by people who actually have an immediate interest and therefore craft the data towards their interest. And this could be USAID, who's appealing to the U.S. taxpayer. Uh, it could be a consultant firm that discusses its projects because that's what it wants to become known for. It can be the British Development Agency because they address their constituents that are very pro-development. Uh, but the point is everybody's telling a partial truth. They don't have to be lying. They're telling a partial truth. And the problem is, though, that if you're looking for a formula for success, you only need to have leave out one uh, element of the formula, and the formula is not valid. And these partial truths are, are like uh, crumbs. Each element is a crumb that follows us to the trail between what happened and what were its results. But if you know the story of Hansel and Gretel, they make a little trail of crumbs in the forest, but the birds come and eat them up, and then they get lost. What happens is these crumbs of data uh, get selectively removed or changed, and we actually lose the path between what was intended and what happened. And because of that, uh, very often we don't know what is a success, what is a failure, and why. And to demonstrate this in the class, I actually use a particular case study. And it's a case study uh, that I was involved in of an electric car in India. And I like the case study for four basic reasons. Uh, it does demonstrate, I believe, how partial truth really interferes with our understanding of what really happened. Uh, it shows how the presentation of truth in international development, at least for the USA, is directly related to the realities of our political system. And uh, the third thing is that it does show that in many of the cases, uh, the fact that truth is not being given in its entirety is not due to bad intent, evil purposes. It can be due to the most noble of purposes. In fact, as we'll see, it's different foundational principles, different ultimate justifications for what had to be done and what should be done that caused a lot of the ongoing distortions in the the presentation of understanding in this particular case. And the last thing I want to do is show that uh, even if you have bad data, uh, it may be adequate for certain purposes, and it, it may not interfere with the success of a pro project, but you probably will pay the price that your success will become a hidden success, and therefore its real contribution in an enduring fashion to knowledge uh, and state-of-the-art understanding will be lost. Now, what's the case of the Rebbe? I cover it much more extensively in class, but I'll give it to you very quickly. Uh, the, I opened a page one day of a catalog from a store called Hammer Kishlema, which is a very expensive store, and they were advertising a $108,000 electric car. And it really looked like a sort of interesting thing. There wasn't much information about where it came from. They just sung its praises and gave you its very high price. But I looked and I said, I know that car. That car was our project in India. No indication in Hammerker Schlemmer where it came from, who did it, uh, why. We'll get to that later. So I quickly Googled uh, the Reva and I came up actually with the website for the Reva car in India. And they, they gave you some more information about their car and what it could do and projected themselves as a tech company, but didn't give any information about where it came from. So then I tried to look at uh, donor projects because I knew we had done this in AIT. But what came up was actually a web page from the IFC, the International Finance Corporation, which among many other people had contributed in one way or another to the project. And they discussed their contribution, but they didn't give credit to anybody else as well. Uh, finally, because I knew it was an AID project, I went into the website of USAID India. And within the website of USAID India, I found the project. And it basically uh, spoke about the project and what was the success of a green car, an environmentally friendly car. But it didn't tell the whole story.
It just said, here's our environmental car. It didn't tell where the project came from, and it didn't apparently know where the project had gone. In the fact that it now being a commercial product that was selling for $108,000 in New York by Hamaker Schlemmer. And this quickly is the story of the Reva. It, it started as a health project because under the U.S. political system, Congress allocates money and money gets allocated under budget categories. And Congress expresses its desires and values in those categories. If it wants a lot of money to go into health, that's where it puts it. If it wants a lot of money to go into environment, that's where it puts it. At the beginning of this project, a lot of money was in health. And this project started as a health project because one of the major problems of health in India is urban pollution. And that comes from particularly motorcycle engines and also car engines, diesel engines and poor quality motorcycle engines. So health was big and it started a health project. But what happened is the administration changed and every administration has different priorities. And the Bush 1 administration had the priority of trade, not aid. In fact, that was their slogan. Let's move from trade to aid. And the money for health shrunk, and all of a sudden there was a pot of money for trade promotion, mutually beneficial trade promotion. How are you going to fund the project? Well, AID got together with a bank in India called the ICICI, a very outstanding bank, and the project that started out as a justification of health became a joint venture project. It had actually been one to begin with, but they hadn't emphasized that. A joint venture between an American electric battery maker and an India car producer. And in fact, it's a wonderful example of win-win uh, for both parties, because both parties were get, even today are now still in the production system. So it became a technology project. But then what happened? India set off an atomic bomb. Now, we had a congressional act that said that any nation that violated what we considered a violation of the Nuclear Anti-Proliferation Treaty, we had to end aid. Even though Pakistan had the bomb and India probably had good justifications for thinking it had to have one, and the people who wrote that provision obviously had very, very strong feelings and, and good feelings about not wanting to encourage nuclear proliferation. But the results were, no, stop all foreign assistance. So what was going to happen to this wonderful project? Well, there were a few exceptions to this. In certain areas where work was considered so important, particularly environment, where people said, look, this is a global problem. We can't afford to stop working on what's happening in our environment, even if we're having political differences. There were exceptions. So what did the mission do? Uh, rather than a trade joint venture, all of a sudden, the REVA became an environmental project. It became a green car project. And uh, here you see uh, how it succeeded as a green car project. But the key was, if you looked at it as a green car project, when it was advertised, it wasn't only advertised as being environmentally friendly, it was being advertised as being economically uh, uh, a good deal. In fact, the Reva sells for about $5,000 in India. That's why Hamaker Schlemmer is not going to tell you that their $108,000 redo model starts as a $5,000 car in India. So here, all of this is happening. And it's always being changed. The story is constantly being changed because of the political budgetary imperatives of the United States tied in many cases to true beliefs about priority principles of each administration. Now, if we look back at what happened, actually, this is a fabulous project. It not only produced an environmental car, it not only produced joint venture, it not only advanced the knowledge of the cooperating countries, uh, all, all those foundational principles actually work because even trade, it, uh, we helped India open up its market and to in, in foreign investment. And today, in fact, uh, among the, the spinoffs of this activity, you would go and you'll find Pizza Hut using electric scooters, which was the original intent of the project, to produce electric scooters because they were the most polluting element. They use electric scooters for their deliveries in India. And irony of irony, of course, now that politics have changed, the U.S. and India are actually engaged in nuclear collaboration and cooperation.